Welcome back, everyone, to the Social Studies Podcast with me, Joe Dombrowski. And me, Gaspar Dazzo. And today's my son's birthday. How do you sing happy birthday in Italian? Happy uh, birthday to you. I don't know. I don't sound <laughs> speak Italian. Happy uh, birthday to you. Pasquale to you. <laughs> but that means happy <laughs> Easter. <laughs> my mom's just um, sitting there right now praying. <laughs> she's listening she's to this like, mad. They're going to hell. Um, you guys, come see me this weekend in Timonium. Oh. I'm going to be at Magoobies in Timonium. And then after that, I'm going to be in Spokane. And then after that, I'm going to be in Salt Lake. And then after that, I'm going to be in Vegas. Then I'm taking a week off before I go to Dania Beach, which is basically Fort Lauderdale. So come see me there. Then come see me in D.C. Then come see me in Calgary. Then come see me in Rochester. Then come see me in Pittsburgh. Then come see me in Denver. Then come see me in Tacoma. And then I'm getting married. Come see me in Poughkeepsie, New Brunswick, New Jersey, Hershey, Pennsylvania. That's near a bunch of other stuff near Pennsylvania. Chicago, Illinois, Philadelphia, Long Island, Boston, Washington, D.C., Tampa, Florida. Washington, D.C. tickets might not be up yet. They should be, but they might not be. But mine are. So go to mine. Uh, Tampa, Florida, Detroit, Michigan, Staten Island, New York, (laughs) Austin, Texas. Those should be up, but they might not be up either yet. Cincinnati and Columbus, Ohio. So you could get your tickets at gasparandazzo.com. So yes, yeah, so Joe, today is my son's birthday. He turned seven today. Crazy. So last year, his sixth birthday, we had a science theme. What's the theme this year? We did. We had scientists come. But remember, Ooh. I wasn't there because I was filming a TV show in the Dominican Republic. Shout mm-hmm. out to Netflix. Family man, family no. man. <laughs> Family's comeback. Family's comeback. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, This theme is, well, let me tell you a few things right now. So at first, the theme is Roblox. You don't even know what those are. They're just I sure do. Oh, I don't know. I have a joke about Roblox in my show. What is it? Give it up I can't tell you. You'll have to come see it. I swear to God, next time you see me, you're going to be like, what the fuck is this? I swear. (laughs) Joe's comedy? So the theme is Roblox, 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 which is cool. Whatever. My daughter's theme, her birthday party is this weekend. Her birthday party is a paint party, a princess painting party. And we have Cinderella coming, but she wants Elsa to come. So she wants Elsa there, <laughs> but she's getting Cinderella because honestly, we were looking at the Elsa, we were looking at the Cinderella. Cinderella just looks better. Like, you now, know, so. Talk to me about this. Talk to me about this. You don't even want to know what these things what, cost? Is what, that what you're going to you down? No, I, oh. well, that too. What are you just like cruising down the street and you're like, hey, is it like going to a brothel? Like you pick out the princess you want? Or no. What? So, all right. So long story short, this guy. Also, I was watching this thing today that said anyone who says long story short, you know, it's about to be the longest fucking story you ever heard in your life. And then the next thing was anyone who says, let me tell you something real quick. You know, it's not going to be quick. And I was like, damn, those are two things I say back to back. Here, so it, case in point. Long, big story short, real quick. This guy that used to be a para in my class uh, used to just sit in the back of my class all day and used to just be doing shit on his laptop. And I was like, what is this guy doing? Turned out he was making this like multi-thousand dollar, um, I don't know if he's a millionaire, but making this big um, company. Flappy Bird. (laughs) On Staten Island. (laughs) Just Flappy Bird. And he was making this big company on Staten Island and what he does is he rents out like the people, the, you know, he brings animals. He brings literally whatever you need for a party. This guy's got bouncy houses. He, he'll pull up with the Paw Patrol crew on motorcycles. Now, hold on. Are they like down on their luck? Like the B team from, from Times Square? Okay. So yes. I'll say, no, That's no, no, no. All I need it. That's I, all I'll I need say it. this. He has like the authentic Buzz Lightyear costume. But to me, a giant Buzz is unrealistic because Buzz is a tiny toy. So why is he six feet tall and coming at you? So like it's the Buzz that looks like Buzz, but you know, it's like those big blocky Buzzes. But what the Elsa and Cinderella are just blonde girls with blue dresses on that come in. So you already know my feelings on this. When Melissa was going to hire her, I'm like, look. I'll do it. Like I could be any of these people. I can't be Elsa, but I could be Hans, the the man from Frozen. I could pull up as Hans, and she's like, "Absolutely not!" I go for the money that we're gonna spend. I could, <laughs> which buy- is what you have to tell me. You have to tell me. What do you think it is for forty five minutes at a party? 
her to come in, do a little, hi, Princess Lucy. So what nice to see you. Is that? What I don't know. That's a hand princess. Hand. No, but what was in your hand? A plastic knife? Oh my God, this is so stupid. All right, Melissa had a driver's license. She had it. It was an old driver's license that was expired. So I cut her face out and I glued it to a knife. And I, whenever she would like talk, I'd be like, bam! And I would just show her a picture. But it's a horrible photo of her. She's like oh 10. God. So I was just like, boom, boom, boom. I was just messing with her. And then she, I, I left it in the lobby, uh, the lobby, in the living room. The, so she- In the lobby. She put it in my <laughs> office. She, okay, okay, okay. So 45 minutes, she comes, she dances. She, I don't know if they sing. I think she just looks at you. She better not sing because you know that Staten Island. Elsa's going to come on and be like, okay, everyone, I will sing right after my cigarette break. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. 500 bucks. Mm -mm. 250. Oh, <laughs> 300. Okay. Now, she's not really doing anything. She's just standing there in a dress. Then Melissa's like, we got to tip her too. So now I'm like, we're tipping her. Okay. So now. Oh God, back to fucking tipping. We're, we're going to talk about wedding tipping in a minute. So she, well, I'll tell you, that sucks. Tip. But who do, this is the thing. Who do I, do I not tip? Okay. They tell me you got to tip the fucking band. Great. You're gonna Am I tip supposed to tip my band. wedding planner? You got to tip the hostess. The matri G, this? like the matri G, G, whoever like got it all put together, you throw them like a hundred. Did bucks. you literally just call my wedding planner a matri D? No, that's not a. I, first of all, I don't know what a wedding planner is. I didn't have a wedding. I don't think I had a wedding planner. We went to the hall. We were like, "This is what we want." They planned our wedding. Did you? You like met with someone separate though? You did. Yes, Bri. I mean, you got my invitation. You know, it's kind of. A little bit on the excessive side. This I don't even understand stuff. your invitation. I'm not going to lie. Like there were questions on there that I thought maybe I just didn't get due to cultural differences <laughs> of, you know, Seattle. Tell me, tell me. Versus New tell York. Um, <laughs> what you know, didn't you get? A ravine or something? A Pope Ravini. <laughs> a Pope Ravini. I'm going to guarantee that majority of people listening have no idea what a potpourri is. It's a Polish like after thing. So for the okay, day so after your wedding. So in my culture, like Italian <laughs> culture, I know you thought you were going somewhere else. Uh, we have a like a breakfast the next day with like the family. Great, this is that, but it's for everyone. And you're like on a river or something. No, no, no. Now you're getting the day before and the day after confused. So what's your potpourri at? My house. Oh, it's just a house dinner. Yeah, a house brunch. Oh, I'm thinking it's like a fancy no, ass it's thing. Low, it's low key. It's low key. Clearly, you didn't read my website, but I didn't. Okay. I don't. I didn't go on your website. That's not. I know you didn't. I, Melissa didn't either. She probably did, but I didn't go on it. Just ask her for the details. So Gasper's party is a slime making party. Oh. So they have like a slime scientist coming, aka a slime intist, aka a, a guy in a, a, anyone. Just what a lab coat, you know? But that's how much these things are. Like the scientists who came to the party, they, they, you're talking about three, $400. And now that I think about it, when I was young, I had a magician come to my birthday party once when I was like 10. And I think my parents probably paid like 200 bucks back in 1995. Yeah, yeah. I made that number sure. up, but like it ha I, could, I can't imagine it was 50 bucks. No, 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 no Should way. Should call my no mom? Way. No, but maybe. <laughs> I'm kind of curious. Yeah. Anyway. So probably, probably good money. So, so these Elsas are coming. Do you get to see them first? Well, I looked on his website. It's not Elsa, it's Cinderella. Because Elsa to me looked like very Staten Island. Cinderella is a little more, you know. Elsa had a tattoo behind her ear. <laughs> she had the, uh, right. she had the, uh, the Frozen logo. I had to order a stripper one time, a man stripper. And literally... I got the exact opposite from the picture. Like, Wait, it, you it ordered it, you picked a, the picture? Yeah, and I was like, I want that one. And they were like, okay, he'll be here at this time. And I was like, okay. And then he got there and I was like, sir, you are fully different. You're not that person. But now what do you do? Like, can you return them? 
Well, I felt <laughs> bad. So I just like was like, okay, come do your thing with all ugly? your facial piercings and shit. No, he wasn't. They wasn't ugly. Just wasn't, wasn't what you're ugly. looking for. Just not like, I'll just say this. The guy that we picked, they were both attractive. The guy that Jeff and I picked was very clean cut. Like if he was walking down the street, you would have been like, I bet he's a stripper. You would have just been like, oh, that's a very well built uh, UPS guy, right? <laughs> that guy looks like he's about to deliver a package. This guy showed up and had his whole face was pierced. Like his nose right here, his cheeks, his lip, his, his tongue, all of it. And I was just like, you're not what I got. So, okay. Three things just came to my mind. Number one, someone messaged me today. Uh, uh, someone, a big podcast listener. Oh, and she, then my mom, and then my mom said to him, happy mother's day. And he goes, my mom passed away. And then my mom had this whole, like, sit down with him and talk to him and like made him feel better. Well, why was your mom there with the stripper? It was actually for my mom. <laughs> oh, for what? Mother's Day. <laughs> and it was, was at your a dad show. There? Yes, and he is still to this day pissed. Oh, he didn't want her to have a stripper? No, he he there are some things he doesn't have a sense of humor about and that was one of them. I could see that. My dad would have been like that too. He would have been he like fucking not stormed okay out. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was not. He was not having it. It was yeah. at a. Sh it was like on stage at a show with like a thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> I remember once someone wrote like on my brother's Facebook. Like my brother wrote like I'm drinking water, and like someone just commented like so is your mom like something like stupid. Oh, didn't and your dad? You told me that. Oh, I told that my dad was Flip. like. Get like my dad was like gonna send the guy a debt threat. <laughs> like my dad was like unacceptable that you would be friends with someone who would talk about your mother like that. And he's like, Dad, it was a joke. And he's like, No, it's not a funny joke. To, you know, like, um. So two, three things. One, this girl Chelsea from Florida. She listens to the podcast. Super cool. She started watching the Trust. Found the podcast through the Trust. Whatever. She was. She said that she was listening to today's last week's episode about presidential penises on the beach. And she had it like playing through her speakers and she said she thought they were going to call the cops on her because oh. of the nature of the episode. That Great was number episode. one. Number two, when you said all the piercings, at work today, not sure how it came up, but um, someone said something about a Prince Albert pier. Oh, we're using, a, we're using a new system called Albert, like a grading system. So I had said to my friend who was teaching it, I said, you're really good at this. You're like the Prince Albert of this program. I said it and everybody laughed or whatever. And I was like, you're like Prince Albert. Then everyone's like, where is that piercing? So I said, pretty sure it just goes right through the middle of your penis from one side no. to the other. And they were like, no, it doesn't. And I was like, yes, it does. I was no, like, no, it, it doesn't. I, oh, I know because then someone Googled it and we saw pictures and I literally had a heart attack. And they're like, how could you think it just goes through the base shaft of your penis? It would rip your penis apart. And I was like, huh. <laughs> okay. How much would you have to get paid to get a Prince Albert? For me? Nothing. Zero. No, at zero dollars. There's no. literally, I would not do it. The thought, uh, like the physical pain, you're, it, to me, you're ripping your penis off. And <laughs> like, that's actually, it's horrifying. I was even reading reviews on if it hurts or not. Everyone says it's like a quick pinch and it doesn't hurt. The thought of every time I pee, I'm peeing on, I'm going to throw up. I'd rather eat raw chicken. <laughs> For real. I would eat a raw I, chicken before. Dude, I think I would eat a whole raw chicken. Also, raw meat guy is, uh, raw chicken guy is now eating ground beef. He's like so in, in chocolate. Yes. And he's also sauteing it with like, like butter and, and yes, just eating. Stop. It's nope. so uh, fucking. Enough. But, I but can't. you know what? Something about the raw meat isn't as gross so, as because like it's almost like it's almost like a ice cream it is almost like ice cream or it's almost like a dream and a good night's sleep and just letting you know having a bad night's sleep can throw off your entire day sometimes before bed i like to think about gasper and how wonderful you're a fucker <laughs> 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 so we have access to each other's ads <laughs> when we read an ad. So I finally was able to write something in it. 
so that Joe can read out loud because I know Joe doesn't pay attention when he reads. He just reads. When did you read. do it? When did I, you do it? Before we even started, as soon as I found the ad, I typed it in. Okay, when the time I did it to you was so good. What did I? What did I no, say? No, you made again? me say cock. <laughs> okay. I was like, I love Christmas cock. Yeah, Christmas cock. Okay, you definitely got me. Anyway, so is that the only line I have to say? That's skip? it. <laughs> okay. Having a bad night's sleep can throw off your entire day. Luckily, beef stream powder can help. It's science-backed, healthy, hot cocoa for sleep. It contains reishi, L-theanine, melatonin, and nano CBD to help you fall asleep. And I can see what you're doing. <laughs> till you fall asleep stay asleep and wake up ready to go the next morning just mix a scoop of powder into hot water or milk froth it up and enjoy it before heading to bed with flavors like chocolate peanut butter cinnamon cocoa and sea salt caramel this stuff tastes amazing and only has 15 calories the numbers don't lie. It's a clinical study. 93% of participants reported dream help them get a better sleep. And it does help me get a better sleep, too. I have a little bit of that, that nighttime cocoa, and I am down for the count. Today, Social Studies listeners get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder. They're science-backed, healthy, hot cocoa for sleep and no added sugar. Better sleep has never tasted better. If you want to try Beam's best-selling dream powder, get up to 40% off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash social and use code social at checkout. <laughs> Listen, um, I was scrolling through Instagram, okay? And I came across this video of a woman having a binky ceremony for her child. And I fell down an insane rabbit hole of these binky ceremonies. Now, before I get your two cents, I'm I, just, know, I don't know what a binky ceremony is. Exactly. I'm going to oh, okay. explain first. And then I'm not going to say anything. And I want to hear what you have to say about it. Okay. Okay. A binky ceremony is the art of getting a child Rid off of, of their, their pacifier. pacifier. Okay, that's what I figured. But. So, the one binky ceremony that I saw, this kid had his binky. First of all, I can't fucking say binky. Okay, it's a pacifier. Shut the fuck up, binky. Yeah, we didn't call it binkies. What'd What'd you call call it? Passies. It, yeah, pacifier, passy, whatever. So, you got a pacifier. This mom put like 10 balloons at the end of it and then when the kid opened his mouth too much, it floated off into <laughs> Neverland. Another That's mom cool. had the kid bury their pacifier. And then the next morning they woke up and there were suckers coming out of the ground. Another the one, a like a lollipop. Oh. Uh, uh, you call it a sucker? No. You don't call those suckers? Like, I want a sucker, like a sucker? Maybe that's cultural. What would you call it? <laughs> lollipop? You would say, like, a, one of those dum dums that's called a lollipop? Lollipop. Just a shitty one. Yeah. Really? And there's blow pops. Those are the better ones. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because they have gum in the middle. Or No, they're just pop. thicker and bigger, and they have, like, a taste. Dum-dums have no taste. The wrapper and says then, pineapple. You open it, it's tucking taste like root beer. And you know? then there's those big-ass ones from Home Depot. Oh, jawbreaker ones? Those are, like, gigantic-ass ones. Anyway, we always those call them suckers. Those are impractical, though. Like, no one should eat that. It's fucking dumb. Then anyway. another mom did a whole thing where the uh, <laughs> the binky fairy came and they put the binky under the pillow and she traded it out for the binky fairy, traded it out for big girl toys, big girl things. Oh, that's big girl cute. Toys. But, um, but that actually backfired and the child was scared of the tooth fairy <coughs> and always hid her teeth instead of put them under the pillow. So um, anyway, what do you think about this? So... Gasper was a pacifier addict. Addict. Oh, just he was fiending. Like he and he he carried it around like a cigar. He just left it at the side of his mouth and would just gnaw at it all day. 
just like walking around, just like hanging outside of his mouth. And then Isn't literally- Isn't it bad for you if you keep doing it too long? It's bad like for their teeth. It fucks up the, the yeah. development of your palate or whatever. Yeah, because you're like sucking forward or whatever. Um, so one night we just took it from him. Well, and he was like, my passy. And we're like, you're done. You're big now. And he was like, okay. That's that was it. it. That was it. My kids are just easy, thank God. And they adapt to things pretty quick. Did I tell you about my kid, my friend who tried to, who tried to um, potty train her kid? What? You did the di no diapers method, right? Mm -hmm. For three days and then it's potty train? Give or take, yeah. My friend tried to do it recently and day one, they took the diaper off and he was just going to be naked around the house. Day one, explosive, <laughs> insane shitting. They're like, we'll try this again another time. <laughs> yeah, it's that's so what bad. happens. They, when they're not ready, they're not ready. Like Lucy just wasn't ready. For everything Lucy's so advanced with, she just wasn't ready to potty train. And then yeah. one day she literally just came out of her room and was like, I want to sit on my body like a big girl. Sat, <laughs> peed on the potty, peed. And then was like, okay, I'm in my, I'm ready for the potty. And that was it. And like, never that, looked back. No way. But like, no way. But we no tried the way. no diaper. We tried all that. She just wasn't feeling it. She would sit, not go to the bathroom, put the diaper on, piss herself. Like, you're a fucking animal. <laughs> like, but, okay, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. So tell me about how she got rid of her pacifier. She never used one. She never wanted it. Never Lucy wanted it. Lucy was thumb sucker. And now she that's still, even harder. And she still sucks her thumb. Not always. She just does it to recharge now. So like, if Lucy's like, feeling it like she was running around a lot she stands in the corner she goes <sighs> and then she pulls it thumb out of mountain and goes full speed again she just does it as like a calming method it's pretty wild we call it like the recharge also did you have to get her off of it though she still kind of sucks her thumb but now she paints her nails a lot so like she thinks like she'll mess up her nails if she uh. sucks her thumb so we're like no don't do that um but i will tell you this so lucy's birthday was saturday uh, uh, Sunday, sorry. So Gasper has been playing piano. He takes piano lessons now. So we got Gasper piano for his room so that he could practice. So Gasper's at night, he's got the piano in his room. The night Lucy turned four, Gasper goes, dad, I got to, I got to unplug my piano before bed. I go, why? He unplugs. He goes, now that Lucy's four, I think she might try to come in my room and play piano in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping. I go, no, no, she won't. <laughs> Definitely yeah, won't. And he's like, yeah. So he took the plug, unplugged the whole thing and hid the plug. <laughs> he's like, not taking any chances. I'm like, okay. But okay. Uh, it's so crazy because like now she's four. So she's like, oh, now I'm a big girl. I won't come in your bed anymore. I won't do this anymore. I won't cry anymore. Because like in her head, she's like developmentally, I'm four. This is what four-year-olds do. So it's like kind of wild. Like really? certain things. Like she's like, Oh, well, now I can ride a bike. Like, she was afraid to ride a bike. She turned four. She could ride a bike. She's like, now I can ride a bike because I'm four. I'm a big girl. And it's all mental. She, it, she just rides a bike around the house. We went for a walk today. It was beautiful out. We walked blocks. She rode the bike like she's been riding a bike her whole life. She had the bike one day. It's training insane. wheels? Or are you doing a training uh, wheels, balance training bike? Wheels. No, training no. wheels. What's a balance okay, bike? You mean just a bike? Balance. No, balance bike is how you're supposed to do it now. It's no training wheels, but the bike's short enough so they can use their feet. To, so they basically, they're like a sitting scooter, if you will. No, and but then, but the pedals still work. So like when they got balance, they just kind of are riding a bike now. Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay, so anyway, so what's your take on the the passive situation? The passive, the the Listen, binky. Ceremony? I don't judge anything that parents do because as a parent, like sometimes just. You got to do crazy shit to get your kids to do. No, stuff. I get it. So I like, get it. I get, I get it. I get it. Like, listen, we had a sticker chart. So you can, you're going to, you'll say this is crazy. We had a sticker chart for Gasper and Lucy. Don't get out of your bed. Every night you sleep in your bed, the whole night you get a sticker. If you get five stickers, we'll get you a prize. You know what I mean? We took them to mm -hmm. Target. So like Gasper, okay. He just was like five times. Boom. Did it five times. Slept in his bed, got the prize, never came in our room again. Lucy has gone up and down. She's done the five, got the prize, slept in her bed for a while, and then came back in our room. And then we had to start it over. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's crazy to think like you giving your kids a prize for doing something or you're, I mean, look, we live in a world today, like where everything's ceremony now, but listen, by all means, you know, like if it got their kid to stop sucking on a pacifier, I get it. You know what I mean? I get why they did it. 
Uh, like we, what's the difference between that and just bribing them with like, hey, come to supermarket with me. If you're good, I'll get you candy. You know what I mean? I don't. Oh God. You know what I got to tell you? You're right. And also, you know what I was thinking this morning in the car and I actually made a video about it. Oh, what? I, I uh, When I was driving Lucy to school this morning, I was blasting Moana, right? And we're, we're duetting, we're singing. Um, you know, I'm the dad, she's Moana. We're going back and forth. You ever see Moana? Great movie. No. A, a phenomenal okay. movie. And you know what Lucy told me when we were listening? She goes, Daddy, I don't think Moana is going to get Christmas presents. I said, why? why? She said, because she didn't really listen because she didn't listen to her mommy and daddy when she went in the water. And I was like, damn, okay. Uh, she's still wow. going to get Christmas presents, but all right. Also, I don't know if she celebrates Christmas. She's from Wow. Anyway, but I was like blasting the music with her and singing. Then I started thinking, I don't think my dad ever sang a kid's song with me. My dad just blasted Ozzy Osbourne and literally, it's like he didn't even know I was in the car. He just put it on full blast. The music just like encompassed my soul. I had no say. I didn't talk to him. I was just there. Like, I don't even know if my dad knew what the kids' songs were. Like, did yeah. your dad like play Disney music for you in the car no. and sing with you? No. My dad was a DJ growing up. So I was Oh, wait. My, my to- mom is calling back. Let's ask. Mom. You are legally on the podcast right now, so I have to tell you that. No, for not legal legally purposes. on the podcast, legally have to, oh, yeah. Okay. okay, mom, you, Joe can't hear you. When I had that magician guy come to my party when I was like ten, remember him? Yes, yes I do. How much was that about? If you could remember, how much? How much you think something like that cost? Back then, probably a hundred dollars. A hundred bucks. It cost a hundred bucks back then. Oh, doing it on the side. So he was a teacher doing it on the side, and he charged about a hundred bucks. I would say yeah, because I don't think I would have paid more. That's like three hundred bucks now. So that's like three hundred dollars now. Probably. All right, so I guess that's what rates are. Right. Yep, that was some party. It was some party. He was great. I know. So also, mom, did dad ever play like kids music in the car with us? Never. <laughs> right? He, he played Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne, yeah. blasted the music, acted like we weren't even in the car. Right. I, no, I used to try to play like Sesame Street songs and he would say, play this when I'm not in the car. Yeah. All right. That's <laughs> what would happen. That's what we figured. She would play Sesame in Mute Street and he would say, play this when I'm not in the car. No one wants to hear this. <laughs> so, I don't think we had the option. We didn't know what it was. Dad didn't let us. So, all right. All right. Love you. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Anyway, so go ahead. So your dad was the DJ. My dad was the DJ. So I was listening to a lot of like jock jam, salt and pepper, like stuff like that. Huh. Supersonic. Yeah. I remember that. We were in uh, We were. It was literally just all old school rock and roll, like The Who, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, and just like blessed, like like whatever the volume was, as loud as the volume could possibly be. That's wild. That is so wild. Should we get into some um, emails from the Patreon members or from the email thing? Yeah, <laughs> that we Let's have. Read an email. This episode flew by, damn. This one's called Classroom Stink Bomb. Hey, Joe and Gasper, love the podcast. I listen to you guys on my way home from work in the morning, and y'all really help me get through the day. Okay, quick story. I'm a second grade art teacher, and last year was my first year teaching high school. I had a super freshman in my class who was a lot bigger and older than my other students, and his favorite hobby was to disassemble my hand sharpener to remove the blades oh my god that's horrifying wait i'm confused he would take apart the wall sharpener to take the blades off what he would do with them i don't know that sounds like a psychopath and also like jeffrey dahmer stuff yeah 
So okay. when he suddenly took in an interest in the sinks to seemingly wash his hands more frequently, I took this as a safer hobby for him. He f- would be frequently at the sinks with a class full of 30 kids with a wide range of needs. So it was very difficult to keep my eye on him 100% of the time. That's the thing with teaching, period. Like, I- impossible. When you have the impossible to watch. I will say just one thing to interrupt real quick. I teach high school, obviously. Is it real quick? It might be. 35 kids today had to take a survey for the school. Like you had to give out 35 laptops and every kid had to take a survey. And literally every kid had a question and every kid couldn't log on and every kid had an issue. Then who's playing moaning sounds from the computer? Who's, you know what I mean? Just like, not like, not like watching porn, just like a moaning noise, like weird noises. You know what I mean? Like who's yeah. doing, and literally I was for 45 minutes. It was so, I thought I was just going to give out the laptops and watch them take a survey. And for 45 minutes, my head was spinning. Oh, Gasper, when I would do anything laptop oriented, when I would teach kindergarten, it was like, I was like, this, I, I can't. I just be like, either I need two helpers in here or we're not doing it because they don't even know how to like, use a computer and then I have to like pass them out, log them all in, get them all ready. By the time they're actively doing the activity, time's up, you yeah. know? Well, and then, and then they like all the have a problem number? that none of them can log in there. And it's just the smallest thing. Like the, the password would be like ABC, but someone's got cap locks on and they have yeah. no idea what that is. You know, it was just crazy. Ours was like the OSIS number. You know what that is, right? Nope. Like your student ID number called an OSIS sure. Sure. Whatever. Like kids have student ID numbers. They're nine numbers. Every freshman, every kid has it. It's your ID number. It's right. like your social security for high school. Okay. And uh, every kid has it. Most of them have it memorized or it's on your ID or it's on your program. Not one kid knew it. So then yep. I had to look them all look up them individually up. on the computer. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, I can't do this. I don't care. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Did I ever tell you about kindergarten too? They would have their headphones in like they plugged in over the top headphones plugged into their Chromebooks. And then I'd be like, I, this is when I learned how you have to, everything's a step with kindergarten. And I'd be like, okay, you guys, time's up. Let's line up. Thinking that they would know, take your headphones out, shut down your laptop, go plug it back in in the station and then line up. I'd say, oh, okay, guys, let's line up. And they would just stand up and walk towards the door. And I have 30 Chromebooks just fly to the ground because they never took their headphones uh, off. They would just get up and start walking. It was crazy. That, well, and that was the other thing. Then like, it's like 224 and every kid still has a laptop in front of them. And I'm like, shit, you have to plug them back into this monster device that has all the chargers in it. In the right so, spot, so in the I'm right like, direction. Call them up. I'm like, put it in. No one can figure out. And these are 15 year olds. I'm like, Put it next to the charger. I don't care what number. Just put it near a charger. So now I'm plugging in. Nothing's working. I was Horrible. like, I have to leave at 2.30 to get my kids. Otherwise, I'm going to be late. I was like, guys, I don't it, figure this out. Like now. Like if six minutes to create an assembly line. I don't care. Anyway. All right. Go ahead. What would, <laughs> what exactly. would, what would knife Melissa do? <laughs> what would knife Melissa do? Fast forward to about two weeks of the sink fascination when I was prepping my class during study hall. I had a few students in my room catching up on work and a student went to put some water in her cup. There was a big, loud bang with an explosion of water coming out of the sink. The students and I were all shocked, curious as to what had just happened. I looked around the area and discovered a penny on the floor. So I checked the other sinks and bang, bang, the same thing happened again. This student had disassembled the sinks and put pennies (laughs) in the spout so that it would build up pressure, sending the pennies flying and shooting water everywhere. Needless to say, this was a very strange write-up and email attempt phone call that I had to send with, surprisingly, no response from home. I never saw the student again after that, but my students said that there were rumors still flying around about him. Just waiting to find out whatever happened. I doubt I ever will. 
Thank you guys for being who you are and making me laugh even on my toughest days. You're rock stars. And yeah, you can use my name, Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. I love that. And I love that Keith Haring picture that you have at the bottom of your email. Gasper, this is horrifying. This is horrifying. I I didn't even know that that was possible. I didn't even know that that was possible. So it sounds like here, disassembled the sinks and put pennies in the spout. Dude, so that like it would build up stuff. pressure. I know. Like I you're taking kid. out the blades, you know? Yeah. You know about that story with the blades, right? With the roast beef sandwiches? Oh, God, what? Some girl, it was a whole document. I think we talked about it on the podcast. It was like in upstate New York. There was a whole documentary. It's phenomenal. If you ever watch it on Netflix, this mm-hmm. woman was a prison guard. She fell in love with these two prisoners. She was married. She fell in love with these two prisoners. They like promised to like do her when they get out of prison. She brought like roast beef sandwiches every day to work, like these big roast beef, but she was hiding like these huge blades in them, (gasps) like uh, sawzall blades, you know, like for a saw. And she was like bringing them in in her sandwich every day in the tin foil and then giving them the blades. And they used the blades to cut the, to cut the bars. They came out under a sewer system. She picked them up. She like ran away with them and then they fucking ditched her. (laughs) They ditched her. They didn't kill her? No, and they killed the guys, though. What guys? Oh, the guys they, who escaped? The prisoners who escaped got killed. Oh, they, like, stole cars, stole guns, stole shit. Yeah, you know. what state was this? New York. And how long ago? It was, I, I think we escaped from... Did she go to prison for the rest of her life? Yeah. Good. She got, she got, yep, this is it. Escape from Danamora. You should watch it. It's, Put the link in know. the thing. Put the link in the thing. Um, It's on Hulu. It's so good. Oh, my God, it's... You'll love it. But just imagine what sucks is like, that girl was married <laughs> and her husband was the one who ratted her out because he found like Polaroids of her like in letters to the prisoners and shit. I think he like ratted her out. Good. Yeah. Anyway, crazy ass. Um, I had a student one time do something similar to this. He unscrewed. This is I, This is another reason why I just like can't. Fifth grade has the worst memories more damage to my brain from teaching fifth grade and this seems so trivial like this is something that shouldn't get you as fired up as it does or did but people have to realize when you deal with little moronic bullshit like this every hour of every day it just adds up to just like an overwhelming feeling of i have to get the fuck out of here this kid undid the sink right he undid the is this common like he said But he took the inside of a marker, a fresh marker, like the filament, and shoved it up there and then put the cap back on. So the water was just coming out orange for forever. (laughs) And at first, at first, sure, like, sure, I I agree, right? But no, I would be pissed if I was the teacher. But you can't see any humor because you're like, are you fucking kidding me? We have to wash our hands. And this is the only sink in this classroom. Now, oh, look, he just got cupcake frosting all over his body. And I don't have a sink to take care of this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh. So then we had to call the janitor because it was orange, like, for two days straight. I thought this thing, I'd just leave the water on and this thing would come out. Oh, so you knew it was in there? I knew it was. In, he ended up confessing and shit. Oh. And, like, we reported and blah, blah. But it was fished up there so much that we had to get a whole new sink and wait like a week. <laughs> See, <laughs> when there's a sink in your class, do kids drink from it? Everything from it. Oh. Everything. Yeah. No, because like in New York City, they don't, no one trusts the water. You can't drink the water, really. What, you can you drink all water? water. You don't drink school water because it's got rust in it. Oh, well, a lot of buildings do. Yeah, it's just the old pipes and roaches. It's um, whatever. You know what? Uh, we were talking about the the meat experiment today at work, and the someone, meat experiment. Yeah, like that guy who was eating the meat, and I was asking everybody how much would you eat the meat for, and yeah. um, then someone was like, "Forget the meat. What about a cockroach? How <laughs> much would you have to be paid to eat a cockroach?" Mm, mm. So I said, "Is it like farm fresh? Like, do we know where it came from? Has it Great ever like question. left the tank, or was it like lingering?" A in- New York City cockroach from the sewer. Yeah, like, so they were like, well, that makes a difference. I'm like, yeah, it makes a huge difference. Like, you're pulling them out of a toilet bowl versus, uh, you know, whatever, versus on a farm. 
And um, so they were like, a New York City just found cockroach. How much would you have to be paid to eat it? What about you? I don't, I don't know if I could do it. It's, it. But I'd rather the cockroach than the meat, honestly, than the chicken. I can't bite into raw chicken. The thought of that is so skeevy. So I'm going to okay, say- on, on, I Okay, have, I have two answers. Okay, I have an answer. Okay, what's yours? $10,000. I would do a farm raised, like fed <laughs> good for $10,000. I would do that organic. Like I think, I actually, Gasper, I don't think I would do it. $30,000. $30, Is he alive? Yeah. Like I would do an alive <laughs> farm fresh, like raised in a tank and it was fed like potatoes or whatever. I would eat that for like $30,000. Yeah. But uh, New York City out, the, out like straight out of the subway cockroach that minimum 50 150 probably wouldn't really? do it for any less. Yeah, what about you? Um I would say maybe uh, I don't know. I, I'm going to say 100,000. I don't know. I, I really don't know if he's alive or if he's dead. You know, th there's, there are different prices because if he's alive, um, yes. So you know what? If he's alive, then I'm going to say 100. If he's uh, 100,000, if he's dead, I'll say 50,000. I like it. Should we Can call I a clean fan? it? Let's call somebody from the Patreon and ask them. So, Joe, I'll okay. call you and then I'll call them into it. Okay. Raul? Raul, you're on the Social Studies podcast. Oh, shit. Hey, guys. What's up, <laughs> what? Raul? We missed you, man. Hey, guys. I'm not just working. Oh, you're at work? You were All at right. work. Okay, well, we'll make this super quick. How much money would you eat a live cockroach for like what's the bare minimum oh come on a live cockroach like that's an easy one guys like 100 bucks 100 bucks raul okay okay what what about a gross dirty disgusting new york city fresh off the nasty streets of staten island how much would that one cost oh <laughs> you'll do that one for less uh a thousand Oh, All right, okay. a thousand bucks. I love it. I love it. Raul's a hometown boy. This is what's up. All right. Well, Raul, I'm glad you were so non hesitant to say a hundred bucks. Like it was the easiest decision. He said, of your life. He said Come on, you guys. A hundred bucks. I love it. <laughs> we'll ship you some cockroaches. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to dip them in chocolate and just bring them to your show, guys. <laughs> oh, perfect. I forgot Raul's coming to the show in Chicago. All right, Raul, thank you so much for being a Patreon member and for. Not caring about eating a cockroach. Enjoy work. All right, guys. Take care. Bye. 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 That's so cool. We just <laughs> confused the shit out of Raul. I love, I love that we do this to people. This is so fun. You guys, you can become a Patreon member too and get a surprise phone call from us uh, at uh, patreon.com slash the social studies podcast. It's how we keep the podcast going. We appreciate every one of you being there. Also, got to tell you guys, um, we have a new... YouTube, the YouTube, the YouTube videos of the social studies podcast are not going out on my YouTube channel anymore. We have our own social studies YouTube page and go ahead and leave us some love there this week. That's your mission. We're going to pick one person who leaves a comment on this week's episode on YouTube. And uh, we, we might uh, give you a good shout out on the pod next week. And who knows? Maybe we'll send you a prize. You never know. Uh, anyway, you guys, you can come see me on the road catch me live and remember i'm in baltimore this weekend get your tickets at thejodombrowski.com and get your tickets at gasperandazzo.com thanks guys right. see you guys later bye